Endangered Wildlife Trust researchers are canvassing the Kruger National Park, collecting data that will be used in lion conservation efforts. This says part of a spatial capture recapture survey to determine the number of lions in the park. GPS tracking technology and old-fashioned groundwork is used to locate lions. Photos of lions are taken and their unique whisker configuration is used as a type of fingerprint to identify them. Experts say accurate estimations of lion numbers will make for more effective management and conservation. And for more on this, we're now joined by co-lead of the EWT Lion Spatial Capture Recapture Survey, Alison, as well as Lisejo. And they are joining us now uh, via our video link. Ladies, welcome to uh, SABC News. I mean, one would say, let's begin here, you are embarking on a very important and, and also a very dangerous uh, task of counting lions. Uh, maybe tell us more about that. I mean, some, some would say, and personally myself, it is really a very scary quest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be clear, we always stay in the car, so we never go out and look at the whisker spots from very close. Uh, but no, it's it's a really cool project, and I think it's really necessary. Uh, and our day looks like um, we drive around and we look for lions, so as many as we can identify. Um, we also capture our kilometers ridden, driven and based on this we can estimate the population that is in the area. We're currently surveying the central of Kruger. Mm. And Lesucha, maybe let me come to you. I mean, why is this exercise so important for our country? Well, it's important because it will give us a look into the line demographics and um, just get a better understanding of the movement of lions and where we can find them and how they are living in the Korea National Park. Mm. And Alison, uh, take us through what it takes uh, to actually go and physically count lions in the Kruger National Park. I know you touched on it a bit, uh, but just take us through your day um, and the routine that you undertake to actually uh, know how many lions uh, are actually in the Kruger National Park. So it's really hard to know exactly uh, where they ha are and how many they are. And also it's very hard to identify them once you see them, because unlike leopards who have spots or wild dogs, lions are identified by their whisker spots. So on their nose, their top row is unique. Uh, so we have to have very close and nice pictures. So in the morning we drive out and we go look for lions based on the knowledge we have of them. So they prefer staying close to water where prey is, or we get tips from tourists or rangers. And then once we spot lions, which is definitely not every day, so it takes quite an effort to find them in this area, um, then we take identification pictures left and right of them uh, that we then catalog for each lion. Mm. And let's come to you, Lesejo. I mean, you are two women in this field um, that is also very male-dominated and also very dangerous and scary at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, tell us more about uh, this field and this career, Lesejo, uh, that you have chosen. Why, why did you choose to actually, you know, conduct uh, this and choose it to be your career? Well, ever since from a young age, I've had a passion for wildlife, especially lions, which for me is very scary, my family would say, because, you know, lions are known as these very dangerous animals. But then getting to study them and getting to understand their behavior and movement, you actually get to learn a lot from animals. So then I chose this path of career because I like to say to break barriers and to change the perspective that my community has of these predators. Mm. So it's just, um, mm. sorry? And Alison, um, uh, what drew you to, you know, uh, pick this as, uh, you know, your career? So as coming from a European country, especially Belgium, we do not have a lot of wildlife left. And I feel like we kind of lost a connection with nature. And uh, when I come to South Africa or Africa in general, I feel like their connection is still there and there's such beautiful wildlife. Um, so ever since I came here, I kind of fell in love with the biodiversity and I really wanted to contribute uh, to their conservation. Mm. 
Lisa Ho, what are the challenges uh, you experience as a woman um, in this field of wildlife? Well, mainly it is when it comes to the physical field work, you know, as it being a male dominated field work, um, um, field, we as women have to work at least twice or three times as hard to prove that we as well can do what they can do. So it's been quite difficult and quite challenging, but then it also um, strengthens you as a woman because you know, we are celebrating Women's Month and we fought for equality. So it just goes to show that as much as um, men can do this, we too as well can do it. Mm. And Alison, I mean, we know that uh, Lesikho over here, she's a field officer intern, and she's also learning, uh, you know, a few nuggets uh, from you. How does it feel to part this knowledge to another woman? Yeah, it's really nice because I had uh, several women in my life uh, tr getting me on this path. And also what I've uh, learned from her is actually also a lot. It's a two way street. So I've learned a lot from her and she's learning from me. And I think uh, it's really nice that a woman wants to enter conservation. And this is also part of my goal to form a platform for women who want to get into conservation, who want to be heard, who also want to do this work. And um, don't worry, you can do it as well. Mm. And Lissaka, how has this journey been for you? I mean, learning uh, from, uh, you know, co-lead uh, Alison over here. Well, it's actually been amazing. And I've told her a couple of times that I feel so overstimulated because, you know, in April I was attending my graduation and now I'm working for EWT and Alison, she's doing her PhD. And I also want to pursue my PhD in lines in the future. So being able to work so closely with her and gain the knowledge that she has, it's really amazing and it's truly a blessing because I never thought at my young age, I would be able to get so many opportunities. So I'm really grateful. And sometimes I'm just so speechless. But yeah, I'm just extremely happy. <laughs> All right. And Alison, what do you have to say to other women who are watching this tonight? And, you know, they also want to take the path that you and Lesoho have uh, decided uh, to embark on. So I feel like a lot of things have been changing, that women have been doing jobs before that were mainly male dominated. But just always to pursue your dreams, even if people say you cannot do it. Uh, there's an internal fire in you and you just have to keep it lit and both physically, mentally, academically, a woman can be as smart, as strong, as innovative as men. And uh, there's nothing to be afraid of because, you know, if we can do it, anybody can do it. All right, uh, ladies, thank you so much uh, for your time. Really an interesting job that you guys are doing. And of course, uh, to ensure that some of us uh, can always uh, visit the Kruger and ensure that we can spot uh, that uh, lion. That's Alison and Lesejo, and they are from the uh, Endangered Wildlife Trust. And of course, uh, they are embarking on this journey where they will be counting lions in the Kruger National Park.